first Iceland vlog. For those who haven't followed along in recent history, when I go on these travels with the McKay Photography Group, the channel turns a little bit more vloggish and I share, usually with Christina by my side, what we're up to on these travels. There are Italy ones, the Montana trip more recently in this past winter, and now here we are, or here I find myself in Iceland. Let's just start with the quick air travel. For those of you who don't do a lot of air travel, well, don't just let's talk about air travel. It is not always the most fun. It's a lot of hurry up and then wait. And then sometimes you got the pat downs and you got the stress of missed flights, missed connections. But all of that can be countered by something like what I experienced yesterday morning. I didn't have a window seat, so you got a picture of this as I was leaning over my neighbors. Uh, flying into Iceland at the golden hour, the, the sun is just starting to rise, even though it's ridiculously early because we're in the summer here. It's not too far from the Arctic Circle, so lots of daylight. Uh, and just flying over this kind of green moonscape, that's really the best way I think to describe it. It looked like the moon, but it had bits of green on it. No trees, no trees as far as I could see. And off in the distance, you see these kind of volcanic features, little, little humps and steam vents rising. It was a pretty fantastic experience. I got a couple pictures I'm sharing with you that I actually uh, asked the woman who was sitting in the uh, window seat to take for me. Land, meet up at the airport, head here to the hotel in downtown Reykjavik. On the way, we stopped at this Pearl, nice little lunch spot. It gives you a great view of the city. Really not a very big city. Uh, it's quite easy to be up at this kind of higher elevation and look out over the entire city down to the harbor and the water. Checked into the, or did a little sightseeing, checked into the hotel, and here's a quick travel tip, uh, especially for us photographers, when we get someplace new, we wanna get out and start shooting. This is really exciting. We've been thinking, planning, uh, wondering, hoping for this moment for a while, but make sure you take it fairly easy on that first day or two. Otherwise, you're gonna make yourself suffer for a little bit longer, especially when you're talking about jet lag. So we did just kind of a stroll down to this amazing glass building, one of like the top three most amazing buildings I've ever been in. It's called the Harpa. I'm going to try to not pronounce very many Icelandic words today because I'm just going to do a terrible job. Uh, but I'm pretty sure I can say this correctly, the Harpa. And it's this amazing glass structure. Uh, it serves as a concert hall. I think there's a theater in there and then some lots of other conference space. It is huge, made out of these kind of honeycomb glass shapes just stacked on top of one another. Uh, some of them are colored slightly different and some of them catch the light slightly differently. Really fantastic experience, a lot of fun to photograph. And then inside you have just uh, amazing mirrored ceiling. Also got, I think it has a hexagonal shapes. Lots of different floors. We actually had a very long, eh, not very long discussion, but a long discussion about whether or not one of the floors was sloping because of the design of the building. From some angles, it looked flat. From other angles, it certainly looked like it was gently sloping. And finally, Elton had the great idea to use his camera's electronic level and lay it down on the floor to find that it was, in fact, perfectly level. But so just really neat, really a lot of fun. We planned to go back there and do some evening shooting, but as I said, ridiculously long hours one of the participants got a great uh, longer exposure shot of it around 11 at night. What most of us in northern North America latitudes would experience around like seven in the after or seven in the evening. So it's really interesting to have all of that extra light. So today we got up and we did what's called the Golden Circle, and we hit some big highlights of uh, just outside of Reykjavik. This was kind of the touristy day. There were definitely some tourists around at some of these spots. Some of them are actually quite crowded, uh, but tomorrow we head out into the quieter kind of northern country. But the big stops today were uh, this national park that sits right on a rift. I mean, the, the, the country of Iceland was formed from the mid-Atlantic uh, ridge splitting apart, lava coming up over thousands, maybe millions of years, I think it's safe to say, it formed this country. And there are places within it where you just have these fissures and chasms and rifts. One of the things that can be frustrating when you visit places like this with lots of tourists around is trying to get a clean picture without people. But at the same time, in situations like this, it's really hard to get a sense of scale. Christina and I have talked about this on our earlier shows. And so it's often fine to get some of those people in there because they have impact. You see the scene, 
And then you recognize that down there in the bottom little corner, those are people walking. And it just gives you a sense of the scale and just how massive this area was. And there was just so much to see there. Uh, the rift with a view out over the, wor the world's largest, Iceland's largest lake was quite fantastic. Uh, there were some sheep wandering around and further down some of the little fissures were filled with crystal clear water. So that was really fun to shoot those and, and take a look at those. I shot almost solely with a Sony a7R and I'm going to come back and talk about the Sony uh, a7R Mark II in just a few more minutes, but let me give you a few more details. From there, we went and saw some geysers. A lot of fun. Geysers, I think, are difficult to photograph because along with that jet of water that comes out of the ground, tons of steam come as well. You don't quite know how high it's going to be. So this one luckily erupted every two to five minutes. Uh, and you, you, got, you, know, you only had to be a little patient to get lots of different uh, options. But one of the things that you know, I concentrated on here was the color of the water and the bulge of the water right before it erupted because there was no steam at that moment. Uh, and so I put up a picture on Instagram. You can follow along on this trip, probably post a couple of Instagram pictures a day. My Instagram is right down below. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. Had a nice little lunch there too. And then we headed to the waterfall. I don't remember the name of the waterfall. Uh, is it Goss? <sighs> Sorry, I think it's a, a, the Goss Fall. That's all I'm going to say. I'll put up a little word right down below me where I'm stumbling and with the name of it. Again, this huge canyon, but you know, it was greener because it was a little bit more slope. Somewhere between a valley and a canyon, this water came through. Several cascades, one of them gigantic, just down and disappeared. And that's where I use the leaf filter. Up till now, I've been mostly using the circular polarizers and neutral density filters that screw onto the end of your lenses. The leaf filter system, through a little device that attaches to the end of your lens, allows you to slide in and out different filters. Right now, at a place like this that we're shooting kind of in the middle of the day because of travel and logistics, we have some brighter conditions in the sky and to be able to do some longer exposures to get that milky smooth water and without blowing out the sky, this setup is pretty nifty and that I have in here both a neutral density filter and a graduated neutral density filter. So you can see through that that there is a gradual darkening over the course. Now, by default, there is two filter holders in this Lee system and I can slide both in. And then it's simply a matter of adjusting. Actually, it's back there. I believe they have attachments so that you can enter more. But then it's just a matter of adjusting that gradation up and down to best match where your horizon is. Now they do sell circular neutral density grade, or yeah, graduated neutral density filters as well. Those are a little trickier to use though because you have a split horizon and you can angle it but you need to move your camera up and down. So this definitely, that is one of the main strengths that I've seen so far of the Lee filter system using the graduated density. Now, the optics of this glass feel excellent. No degradation to the quality. I'm really impressed with that. And it snaps on and off easily. And if you have uh, multiple lenses that you wanna use it on, then you simply buy the adapter ring for each of those lenses and it pops on and off very quickly, which I also find nice. I saw some people were making kind of a big deal on the internet. Somebody told me that it can pop off easily. Uh, I haven't seen that issue. And, you know, worryingly, I tried to pop it off afterwards and you need to use some force. I imagine if you banged it against something that would happen. So we're just in our first full day here in Iceland, which is amazing. We've seen some geysers. We're now at this location. This is Gullfoss, a fantastic waterfall. I've been shooting it for a while with both the Sony a7R Mark II and the Canon 5DSR. As I'm recording this, I haven't looked at any of these files, so I'm not gonna say anything yet, but overall, I've been really happy with the quality and the feature set of this Sony camera. This was a massive, like, oh, not quite the scale of Niagara Falls, but certainly in the realm of very large waterfalls. Uh, I think there is a taller waterfall that we're gonna go visit, but the volume of this one was certainly very high. All right, let's talk a little bit about gear uh, because I'm putting a title on here that this is my Sony a7R Mark II, and I certainly don't wanna be um, accused of link bait. Uh, this camera is, has a lot of things to love about it. And one thing that I really dislike, and it's not a total shocker, 
Uh, the quality out of this camera is fantastic. I'm really impressed with the image quality I'm getting. Pixel peeping at one to one in Lightroom. Some of the shots, just absolutely fantastic. Uh, and that's great. Autofocus is very good too. I've been using it with the 16 to 35 Canon, the 24 to 70, and the 70 to 200 primarily. And right now I have the little Sony FE 28 millimeter with that fish eye adapter on there that I had some fun with today as well. Autofocus with those Canons, uh, very, very good in good light, in, in normal light, in normal conditions. Some confusion in lower light I've seen. Uh, certainly not perfect, and when you put it side by side with a Canon in lower light, Canon's going to beat it solidly again and again. Normal light though, just as fast. Some people are saying at faster. I haven't done enough tests to agree or disagree, but there's no hesitation that I notice. I'm impressed with the autofocus speed, even using Metabones and uh, the Canon Lass. Now, Elton, who also has an A7R Mark II and is on this trip along, uh, is using a $99 Viltrox adapter. So not the $499 or $599 that the Metabones is. And as far as I can tell, it's the same. Uh, the build quality isn't quite the same, but performance, there's no impact to autofocus, there's no impact to image quality, because this is just, there's no glass in there. See, I can put my finger in there. Uh, so that is, and also I have adapters from Comlight back home that I'll be talking about when I get back. So we can do a little shootout, talk about these different adapters and how well they work and whether or not Metabones is worth the premium that they charge, it clearly is a premium. Uh, what else do I love about the Sony a7R Mark II? Well, this, this falls in the don't love yet, but I think I'll get there, and the control scheme. It, it's quite customizable. Uh, I, you know, I'm used to the Sony a7 Mark II, which I took on a trip earlier this year. Uh, so, but I haven't quite finished setting this up the way I'd like. There's enough customizability that I think I'll get there, but right now there are some things that require a button press more than I would like or that I'm used to on my Canon. Uh, or I've assigned kind of double duty to the control wheel, especially when you put ISO. So there have been times where I've accidentally changed one setting when I mean to change the other. Again, that's going to be getting used to it. Love the articulating screen, except there is this weird thing that happens. I guess it's actually not really a fact of the articulating screen. I'm gonna stand up to show you. When I'm working with this camera, it's dark over on that side, isn't it? Uh, and I am shooting at the hip or landscape, the viewfinder, uh, sensor is extremely sensitive and will shut the viewfinder off when it's right around here, which is where I always hold it when I'm shooting at the hip, or I guess technically when I'm shooting at the belly. Uh, so that's annoying. Now I can turn off that viewfinder uh, completely, and so I have to press a button to switch back and forth between them, but I really wish it wasn't that sensitive. That is not that close to me. I hope maybe they can come out with a firmware update um, that will fix that. That would be really lovely. Now, so that was good, 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 slightly annoying. Now the bad, battery life. Uh, and this isn't a shocker. Um, I knew battery life was bad based on using earlier Sonys, but really using this one at the first, the National Park with the Rift, got out of the bus. It was about 100%. I'd been playing with the menu for a few minutes before we got out of the bus, but it was basically 100%. Wandered around there for about an hour, hour and a half. I don't know the exact number of pictures I took. It wasn't more than 100. About 10 minutes of video. Some of that was 4K. So that's, you know, 10 minutes. That's an amount. Uh, when I got back in the bus, so about 100 pictures, about 10 minutes of video. When I got back in the bus, I was at 27% battery. That is pitiful. Uh, you know, it's in-body image stabilization. Now, some of you are going to come back and say, you know, there are things you can do. Yes, I've already turned the pre-AF off. Uh, in-body image stabilization, in that situation, I could probably have turned off. The light was fine. I wasn't doing handheld with any of that video, so that would have saved some as well. But still, it's, it wouldn't have saved that much. It wouldn't have made that much difference, I don't think. I've got 10 more days to test, so I'll certainly be sharing more information soon. But when I think about trying to use this at a wedding uh, right now, based on what I know and what I've experienced, I, I would find it very difficult. Battery grip, you can throw two more batteries in, right? I believe it's just two more, or is it two and there's still one inside? 
I have to look that up. So then three batteries, okay, maybe. Uh, but still, three batteries to get to the point where I might recommend it. So wedding wise, but for landscapes, for this general walk around photography, uh, and to counter that also, I plugged it in, in in my camera bag to the little USB RAV power thing and it, it was in good shape. So uh, charged up while I was eating lunch. So that's nice, I appreciate that, but that's poor battery life. All right, and I mentioned tomorrow we're headed out of Reykjavik and we are gonna explore some more of this country. Don't know how much uh, connectivity I'll have in all of these different places, but my goal is to be vlogging every two days and give you a update from what we have done and answer questions I've seen in the comments. So as I said, leave comments down below with questions you have, thoughts, what you'd like to hear and see more of while we're here in Iceland with McKay Photography Academy. And we are at what, Friday, August 7th. You all probably start watching this tomorrow, Friday, August 8th. That means you really have just one and a half days left to enter this chance to win a trip to Yosemite National Park with McKay and myself uh, and Christina and a bunch of other people. I, that's one of the things that when you go on these trips, I get all excited about the place that I'm going and stuff. And then everybody starts to arrive and you meet all of these fun people, a great senses of humor, interested in photography to varying degrees, and we just have a good time. Uh, so that's a big part of it as well, meeting new people and having fun. Thanks so much for watching.